Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. This is Stuart Cohen. Uh, we will get started in just a couple of minutes. We're just waiting for some of your colleagues to log in. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today on our live demo and peer Q&A call. Um, as always, you know, we use this session for anybody that wants to uh, see a quick demonstration of Nodeware, wants to ask a few questions. Uh, also, we're fortunate enough today to have Britta Nelson with us to talk a little bit about uh, uh, cybersecurity employee education and training and some things that her organization offers uh, to MSPs and then uh, downstream to their clients. Uh, we already got a couple of questions in on LinkedIn about uh, how, uh, how can I strong arm my MSP to get the most education I possibly can. So uh, I'll let uh, Britta talk a little bit about that in a few minutes when we get started. Uh, but um, like I said, we're just waiting for a couple more people to log in and then we will uh, go ahead and begin today's session. Uh, be thinking about uh, questions you want to submit uh, through the chat box, through the question box. Uh, we'll do our best to get to all of those uh, and to everybody as they come on board. Uh, so we've gotten uh, we've gotten a few people that have come on board. Uh, we've gotten a number of others that have were logged in ahead of time. So thanks so much for uh, for coming on. Uh, as always, uh, as I was just saying, right, this is the opportunity we provide once a month to provide a live demonstration for people that either aren't ready for a free trial, aren't ready for a proof of concept, um, and just want to get started, if you will, and, and see what others are doing with Nodeware, especially with all of the focus around continuous monitoring and continuous scanning with uh, all the regulatory requirements that are coming up, as well as just the frequency of cyber attacks coming at people. Uh, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to go through that process. Uh, if you're a member of Seven Figure MSP, there's some benefits available to you with Nodeware as well that you may wanna take advantage of in their private uh, partner portal if you're an elite member there. Um, as always, um, you know, we want to take your questions, so submit your questions uh, in the chat box, in the question box. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have Hackware with us today, so we'll talk a little bit about Hackware. I'll introduce Britta in a second. And then uh, this is all about taking, you know, questions from you. If you have questions, if you need answers from an MSP that's using Nodeware, an MSP that's deploying, you know, continuous monitoring, continuous scanning, and immediate alerting. Uh, versus what's historically been done in the past, you know, quarterly or Sunday nights or monthly, uh, we can talk about that as well. So with that, um, let me remind you of a couple of events we have coming up. You know, this is around the demonstration of Nodeware, but we have two sessions that we refer to as kind of public service announcements, where we're working with Gradient uh, very specifically on uh, on how do we make MSPs stronger, how do we make them safer. How do we help them scale uh, with all of the SMB requirements that are coming their way and the new businesses? Uh, we're fortunate enough to have Matt Topper from Gradient and Nick McCord from Integris to talk about how MSPs can move beyond their current clients that are getting IT support. How do they provide them cyber hygiene? How do they start to build a cyber program? And, uh, and as well, if you're an MSP that's only providing IT and desktop support, what you're probably gonna to have to do so some other organization doesn't come in to provide cyber services for your clients. And then we're gonna have a session with uh, uh, Jim Lawrence from SDP Compliance and uh, Molly Moore and some representatives from CPI Meriplex, uh, specifically talking about the FTC safeguard, um, how it was put in place. And if you're an auto dealership, RV dealership, Marina dealership. If you have consumer loans, uh, you now now <coughs> you now need to get the FTC safeguard in place by December 9th. Uh, so we're going to talk about the compliance side of that, the IT side of that, and that'll be on the 20th. So with that, uh, let's jump right into today's session. Uh, as I said, we're fortunate enough to have Hackware with us today. Britta Nelson is their marketing manager. Uh, Britta, welcome to today's session. Um, and maybe before we get started with the demo, you know, you, you heard the question, right? How do I strong arm my MSP to get the most out of my, uh, my education uh, so I can help our company? So maybe you can elaborate on, you know, maybe there's some things that 
you know, if they're an MSP, they ought to do to educate their clients. Mm -hmm. Or maybe if you're a client, some things you ought to ask your MSP for to make sure you're getting the best education, you know, whether it's whether it's complete, whether it's thorough, whether it's often, whether it's comprehensive, you know, maybe elaborate a little bit on kind of what you're seeing in the marketplace today. Then we can get to the demo and then we can get back to more of an open discussion. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for having me today. Um, like Stuart said, I'm the marketing manager for Hackware and we provide automated cybersecurity awareness training through MSPs most often. So if you're looking to have your MSP add to the training that they're already giving you, I mean, there, you can always ask. It's definitely something that you should reach out to your MSP and ask for. Um, like with Hackware, for example, we offer the option to set any sort of cadence that you want for the training that you're receiving. So if you were wanting to do this more frequently than if you're currently doing it quarterly or something like that, you can do it weekly or you can do it bi-weekly, whatever works best for you. So that's something that you should be discussing with your MSP as they're setting you up. Um, and I think that that's great that someone's asking that because as we were talking about before this webinar started, 90% of security breaches in companies are a result of phishing attacks. So that's something that's very prevalent and training your users, or if you're an MSP, or just training your company as a direct company company um, is super important because that is how people are entering your organization. That's how all these ransomware attacks are starting is from that person who's clicking on an email link. So providing the email simulations and the trainings to get people to actually be prepared when something comes into their inbox to make sure that they're pausing, reflecting before they're taking an action is what we really focus on at Hackware. Okay, on, on that, um, I was just going to ask just sort of the your content development, right? Sort of your process, you know, your expert, you know, what, where, where are all your expertise is coming? Is that, I don't know if that's the right plural, but <laughs> where does the expertise come into, to, you know, in developing all that, the messaging and the content? And I mean, I know there's engines behind it that that's also a specialty, but your content development's got to be an interesting specialty as well. Yeah, definitely. So our CEO is a former ethical hacker. She used to work with the Department of Defense. And so she really knows the email phishing business inside and out. So she provides a lot of that content from her own experience in the field. Um, and we work with animators and other content creators to build out content that's actually going to engage your audience. Because as we see from some security awareness training, it's not interesting or it's not engaging. So having super engaging content that everyone in your team is actually going to watch and pay attention to is really important and what we focus on a lot at Hackware. So we have like three minute videos for all of our micro training. We do one quiz before and after each video so we can judge their um, what they understand before and then what they've learned following that video. And we offer different levels of training too. So we're kind of gamifying it. And then if anybody wants to provide any sort of like employee incentives as people are moving up through the ranks or as they're doing getting less vulnerable or less susceptible to these kind of attacks, we offer an open API for that too, so people can kind of play with that however they want to for their organization. Great, thanks. So with that, um, Frank, why don't we start a short demonstration of Nodeware. Let's talk about some of the things that uh, MSPs can, uh, how they can help um with some of the continuous monitoring features some of the immediate alerts and some of the reporting things and then we can come back to how you can augment some of those together with uh education and training perfect okay just to confirm everybody can see the screen so yep. um yeah so so nodeware is a as a continuous running uh normal business hours vulnerability management scanning and and management program um, we do this, um, and again, our, our patent has been awarded last year that in how we actually do this continuously, right? Most other scanners that you may have seen or heard about run on the weekend or run at night or run, um, you know, off times just because the, the, the burden on the network, the data going back and forth is so, so intense. Um, what we've specialized in and, and where um, most people see the huge highest value is that our engine is running so low uh, bandwidth requirements that it enables continuous. So if there's a new vulnerability that comes at, you know, that comes out at 10 in the morning and gets matched into our database, we within a day we're, or within hours really are able to match that up to an employee's, to a company's assets and what their, what their risk is. So. Um, how we do that is we collect, uh, we have network sensors, so virtual network sensors that can be a, 
a window sensor or a couple different uh, virtual machine uh, sensors that can be put on any device that's uh, applicable in on a network and it goes and immediately starts scanning and is continuously scanning and by continuous we mean starts with every minute our the assets are being um, sort of pinged to see if they're online or not and so you know that you can also get if a new asset comes onto the network within minutes you are uh, as the MSP you can get an alert on what that is so um, that's the continuous uh, monitoring via the sensor we have agents for Windows devices for Macs and some Linux endpoints that also then provide um, you know the, that device that could be anywhere it could be in the office could be around the world um, it's uh, it's pinging and providing data whenever it's connected to the internet so we're able to capture that and then thirdly via a cloud sensor uh, we can manage and, and monitor your um, external websites of your customers. So you can just put in their URL and it, it's added into the mix of the of the um, of the scanning. So you can make sure that any customer or outward facing, public facing devices are also at least known if, if there's any uh, relative vulnerabilities. So all that being said, here's the data that you get. You can see your number of customers. You can go in and look at it individual customer you can see there's some some highly critical uh, vulnerabilities found in each of these devices uh, or each of these customers now we can look in and see okay so what's going on here we've got you know 14 assets particular within this one um, you can see the ip address the mac address and also the fingerprint um, over here to the left you can see the little green eyeball or the red this means that this is uh the last time we pinged it was not online these ones are all online um, and uh, current with the data being provided um, we also have these tags where you can look for if you're wanting to do you know you're going in and you've got want to look at servers you can just click on that you can look at the servers online or if you want to do a custom tag and you want to just look at jeff's office uh you know assets that are by them you can look at that and just uh, you know narrow down to that and then ultimately over here is the score uh, which is kind of a running average of that device that particular asset against all known vulnerabilities for that particular asset so if we look at uh, let's look at this one here for example um, you can see there is um, you know a particular high vulnerability score or a vulnerability found but medium some lows some other some other general info I'll take another look at uh, this other one here. Uh, which one? We'll look at this one. Um, this one has, you know, again, a couple modified, which means that you as the MSP can, can tweak uh, what you're doing with that particular device, or maybe you want to turn it off for a time being because you're doing some work on it. Um, and then uh, you can, you know, again, some, some different levels here. But one of the things that's really particularly valuable is once you go a little bit further in that particular asset and that particular uh, vulnerability found uh, in most in many cases and we're increasing this as as we go you can find descriptions um, and potential solutions so we don't do the remediation but we suggest and provide uh, potential options for you to do that remediation um, again we're a very focused tool on what nodeware does in terms of the the continuous scanning continuous vulnerability management um, and that's that's really critical to just to, to, to keep it focused um, the other thing uh, you know that's hey Frank uh, yes sir we did get a question about how do you find a multi-function peripheral um, well we what a multi-function printer peripheral the, Peripheral. Well, in any peripheral, any any device on the network that has an IP address, we are going to be able to find. So it's it's whether it's on a subnet or a VLAN, um, the sensors that are deployed, you give the range, we go out and find it, um, and are able to. It be it would be included in in this uh, in this asset list for for device. Um, and as I mentioned, in addition, if you have an offsite. Uh, or a remote worker with a PC, that device is, you can put an agent on that, and when it's, uh, when it's available, it's, um, it's reporting its latest data. So if that's not the correct answer or the, what they're looking for, have the, um, you know, please uh, respond or provide another question in there. Um, but one of the things I did want to show that's kind of interesting that, um, again, kind of as a, 
tracking your work, uh, for example, of, you know, let's say on this device, it's already pretty high, but let's just say you did some work on it, you want to check it, you can do a request, a rescan, and within the next cycle of, of, of blocks of assets that are scanned, it's going to prioritize this one again. It may have been done two hours ago, but it'll, um, and it usually does it once a day, but if you're doing a request to rescan, that is um, brought up to the priority, so within another say half hour, 15 to 30 minutes, you can uh, get an updated score to make sure that what you did was was uh, was was done. Um, the other thing that I think that's really relevant to show hey, real Frank, quickly is just, yeah. So let me just interrupt you since we're getting a couple of questions kind of live, I wanna make sure we respond to these right away. You know, we yeah. got a, just got a question specifically that just says, what makes Nodeware different from its competitors? Uh, maybe you wanna spend a second talking about that and then I can add a couple of things. Okay, from from its what? From its competitors. Oh, okay. I think the the the, the primary difference is the the lightweight uh, sort of network requirements, which provides the ability to do continuous. So there's no scheduling uh, of of assets or, and being scanned. It's just tapping continuously. You're not having to wait for the weekend. Um, you're not having to wait for off off hours. So um, you know when when people aren't on the network and you don't have access to devices. So this is running continuously, whether it's on-prem or off-prem. Um, some of the competitive products don't have agents uh, to be able to do that off-prem management and, and tracking. So um, that's a, that's another big feature. Um, our our deployment tools, the way that uh, the way that it's deployed onto a customer site has been. We've had many MSPs switch from other environments because they're just difficult to to deploy. Um, we've seen anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes an MSP can have a new customer up and running and gathering data with very little um, interference, if you will, or, or trouble. So that's that's a huge play on the front end, the continuous, which is the ongoing, and then there's reports here that I'll show once, once you've um, had a little bit more, but I'll go into the reports, which I think is also a, a big value add. Perfect. Why don't we go to the reports and then I'll... Uh... I'll make a couple okay. of comments. Okay. So on the reporting, the interesting thing we do two, two ways that we're doing reporting. There's the editing of the schedule. So you can, if you want to do weekly on Saturday and you want these two reports to be sent to you, great. That, those will be in this um, in this report structure here all the time. If you look at, um, if you, let's say you're going to an exec, uh, a customer MSP meeting in the afternoon. You can um, uh, you can say I'm going to select the customer over here. Um, sorry, um, and you can select um, I'm going to do a you know executive summary. I don't need a full report, but I need to be able to run something. So I can just run run this report. Um, it'll be here here you know, showing up at the top here shortly. There it is. I can download an HTML on a secure download and open that up right away and here's my executive summary for this customer at this point you're able to say and this is white label there's no nodeware branding here so if you have the editing tools you can put your logo in here whatever but at a minimum you can go on a blank, <laughs> blank report and say hey mr customer you were at 800 last month now we're at 846 because we did x y and z or here's our roadmap to the next few things we're going to do um and that's that's where you can get it. you get the top phone oops you get the uh, top vulnerabilities available or found the most common, and then also just sort of a, a range uh, of where the devices are in their in their criticalness. Um, and then there's some other information here about what's done and how it's doing it. So again, you're providing this as a value add to your customer and a quick, quick, easy report. Um, we also have a full set of uh, REST or JSON REST APIs so that if you have the capability or have a platform or an integration tool you want to integrate the data, all this data that I've shown from reports to the data to the alerts, all of that can be captured and sent via APIs to there. And then lastly, I'll just call out the report page. Um, again, it's you know all the information you'll need is right there. Um, and um, we're, you know, again, from deployments to credentialed scanning, et cetera, et cetera. And then the last thing I'll just add in just as a as a support and a differentiator is that this product was developed and continues to be developed in uh, Rochester, New York, uh, and our support is based in Rochester, 
and around the U.S. So um, we we provide that as a as a key differentiator as well. So we're very proud of our our support times and our response times. It's you know, I think second to none. So we got a question. Maybe if you could go back to the uh, network scanners and the sensors, and maybe spend a minute on the sensors versus the agents, and the fact that uh, you can provide we provide an unlimited number of agents and an unlimited number of sensors at no cost. Uh, they come with the product itself, so there's not an incremental expense for the agents uh, or for the sensors, which is another one of the things that in some cases our competitors charge for. So if you will, there may be some additional costs or hidden costs above and beyond just the product. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. And so um, as you mentioned, there's there's Hyper-V, there's there's um, VMware uh, sense, uh, sensors for for the network uh, play. And then there's um, the window sensor. So these are the different customers. So you can see which ones are being used in each of these locations. Um, and you know you can deploy as many sensors as you want. We again, as Stuart just said, we don't charge per sensor. We don't charge per you know if you want to deploy agents out, they're 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 just downloaded and and deployed. Our our pricing and licensing model is a is a multi-tenant environment. So if you let's say you've got ten customers combined uh, with a total of uh, let's say a thousand assets, one customer might be thirty three, another one might be sixty six. <coughs> Um, you are setting um, that, those up as, as you go. So you're not having to license for each individual customer. And this is where our kind of our integration with Gradient MSP really comes in handy is that those numbers can get added into the billing, um, the billing tool that they have, the synthesized program, uh, so that you can allocate those costs per asset to the appropriate customer and you can be, you know, managing your, your um, uh, your API, I mean your 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 P and L, uh, that much better. Um, so there's, you know, again, there's some other tools in here that we can um, uh, we can talk about and and show. But you can see all the different. Um, uh, I'm sorry, just the agent download, for example, just show that just top the variations that we have. You can look at it, download here. Um, the last thing on these that's really important for an RMM in your arm for an MSP. Utilizing your RMM tools, we have instructions and ability for you to, to send this, you know, as a quiet download um, to your to your end users, or you can, you know, do whatever makes sense to you. But the but the tools are available there for easy deployment. Um, as we talked about, you know, many many of our MSPs are having setting up a new customer within 15 to 30 minutes. Um, agents might take a little bit longer just from a deployment and the end user uh, uh, activation, but um, that's all there and, and available. The other thing I'll add on the competition, you know, most of the competition in the vulnerability management space, you know, were products that were written, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago that quite frankly were designed to run Sunday nights, designed to run quarterly, monthly, to give you a snapshot um, when people necessarily weren't at work and then allow you to do remediation when you took those snapshots over at a period of time. Uh, because Nodeware got developed um, as a as a buy versus build discussion by our services organization about six years ago, and they actually used it as part of their VCSO capability and as part of their incident response uh, services. Um, it runs during, as Frank said, it runs during normal business hours. Uh, we have a number of clients that were running some of our traditional uh, competitors. Uh, on Sunday nights and on monthly that are now running Nodeware when the client wants continuous scanning and wants continuous monitoring. Uh, we also have MSPs that are upcharging, if you will. If you want continuous monitoring, you want immediate alerting, you can get that through one of their offerings. And if you want monthly or quarterly or annual scanning, you, that's a different price uh, to give you a level of protection, a, a level of security, and a level of uh, of strength and responsiveness. So um, I think that is a big, big competitive advantage, um, as well as not only the ease of setup, uh, as Frank mentioned, uh, but also our support organization. It's all US-based, it's the same day. Uh, we have the ability to provide uh, same day support on all tickets and level one support, uh, or level two and level three to our MSP partners. So. Uh, there's a number of things that differentiate us from uh, where the market's gone uh, and quite frankly 
uh, as the market has changed over the last six to nine months from um, what was occasional scanning to continuous scanning with the regulatory requirements, the compliance requirements, and the frequency of attacks have just changed the way small businesses need support from their MSPs. And it's a value add that their MSPs can provide to their clients as well. So, you know, actually, um, and actually, can, kind of to, to follow up on that, and I'll bring to bring Britta back in. One of the things that, that we've hear a lot of times, they did the, kind of talk about the insurance market and cyber insurance and the requirements, right? Some of the two, you know, two two primary criteria are the continuous, you know, scanning and continuous monitoring of the network for vulnerabilities and its training. So, you know, we kind of, this is the, you know, if you're not very involved, if you're just kind of starting on adding, you know, some cyber hygiene principles or strategies or, or services to your customers, right? You can't start more basically and more simplistically than adding nodeware for vulnerability and adding training into your into your into your offerings to the customer. So Britta, maybe you can just sort of talk, you know, how does an MSP start? What you know, how do they position this to to their customers to say, hey, here's here's some training I found. I think you might need to do it or what what's what's that opening salvo right over the how, how do they make start the offering? Yeah, definitely. So like you're saying, a lot of insurance companies are requiring security awareness training, and it's not just to protect themselves. I mean, it's also to protect you because at the end result is not to just be able to make an insurance claim if and when a breach occurs. It's also to protect your end users from something actually occurring to them when a breach comes in. So I think that that's really like where we like to start with the security awareness training point is that these attacks are happening. Like we're saying that 90% of phishing attacks are coming in and affecting the end user. That means that there is someone coming and trying to make it in front of your user. So you might as well be doing everything that you can to protect them from these kinds of attacks. Um, and then when it comes to the insurance companies, like we've heard of companies that have been breached and if they don't have that security awareness training in place, the insurance company is gonna ask like, have you been doing anything to get this training and to make your employees more intelligent about the attacks. And if you say no, they're not going to fill out that, you know, they're not going to pay out whatever they need to for that situation. But then I also recently heard a story about, I think in 2017, there was a malware attack where a company, they had like $3 billion in claims and they ended up getting that $2.7 billion from their insurance company because they didn't have anything listed in their insurance policy about cybersecurity. So that just speaks to how now insurance companies, if they didn't have that in place before, they're starting to add that. And they're putting that security awareness training in there as like a first line to say like, you have to be doing these minimums, like you're saying with Nodeware and then also with Hackware, like putting that in place as a safeguard for both sides of the aisle, like both of the insurance and the MSPs and the end users to protect them. Right. Yeah, no, that, that's, it's, it's, um... You know, and, and there's not that these requirements are not going to lighten up, right? And so, if right. an MSP is not offering these today for their customers, they, you know, the customer might be getting it from somebody else or from directly from a, another provider. Um, so, you know, why wouldn't the you know, why, you know, why wouldn't the MSP take the opportunity to earn some extra revenue and commissions on on adding no, you know, hackware into their mix? Right. So we're, we've seen that people have said that they, once they have security awareness training in their stack, they're reaching out to their insurance companies and letting them know that they're offering that. And that might get you a discount on your end. So that has, sometimes can even cover the cost of security awareness training. So that's just like an easy add that way for the company, because if you're right. getting that offset cost. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. And so on the same topic, just I've seen, I've been doing a lot of looking into insurance and security awareness training together. And yeah. I found something that said that I think 45 states right now, so almost everybody and Puerto Rico are either currently working on passing legislation or like looking into legislation about requiring security awareness training for mm -hmm. companies. So it's not just something that you need to do to safeguard yourself for insurance. It's also possibly gonna become a law in certain areas. Absolutely. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think uh, that I just kind of, well, California is usually kind of on the leading edge with a lot of the legislations like that. I, I, but I'm I'm sure it's all, yeah, as you said, 45 already in process or underway with with the regulations. You need to you know as an MSP, you need to know what's going on in your particular state and make sure you have an offering. So where your end give, Britta, give, give Britta and her team a call yeah. <laughs> if you need to start yeah, get started. 
is one of the ones that really kicked off the cybersecurity awareness as being like a part of, at least for the financial industry. Yeah. So maybe maybe as well, just just you know, in, in Hacker was fairly new out in the marketplace and doing some you know extra recruiting. So what what is a what is a you know what's been a recent case study, if you will, or a success story for an MSP offering this? You know what what was their you know uh, you know you know any 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 data in terms of what they've done and how they you know how they've made their customer happy? I mean, any specifics yeah. you can share? Um, without saying like specific companies that we're working with, I think that our main value add that we're giving to people is that for the MSP, is it's a lot quicker to use Hackware. It's a lot of less employee time. So you can install it quickly. Like you're saying with Nodeware, it's like a 30 to 45 minute initial setup. And then it's like maybe once a month you can go in and check on how everything is going because we're also scanning their users for vulnerabilities. So you can find different areas of susceptibility within your team and point or within your end users teams and you can give them additional training or you can provide them with more resources to kind of help like lower that susceptibility. And we also offer a lot of reporting as well. So you can kind of see that number decrease as you're using security awareness training over time. So that's a big way that we're adding in. And then one thing I wanted to add to when you asked me how we're creating that content, where we're getting that data is I should have mentioned that we're also using data mining to get the real phishing attacks that are coming in. So we offer phishing simulations uh -huh and also text message based simulations. So we're scraping the content from the users of e real phishing emails that are coming in and then using our AI technology to flip that into something that might actually come. So using our simulations, you might actually get an email that looks like it's coming from Stuart or something and then it's gonna, it could fool you that way. So we're trying to stay on top of that evolving phishing landscape, you know, cause these people are just getting smarter and smarter. Yeah. To that point, you know, Frank mentioned Gradient and what we're doing integrated into Gradient from the billing standpoint. Uh, but we also, you know, we recently launched a program, a partnership with Security Studio. Uh, they have S2 assessments. So they uh, not only to provide assessments, kind of small, medium and large for a wide variety of industries, and they've got them customized for a number of industry segments. But the output of Nodeware drops immediately into the assessment from Security Studio through our API. And then uh, the, the API will allow the output of Nodeware and the assessment to drop into the questionnaire that SciSurance is using to provide cyber insurance for MSPs and for cyber liability for their clients and their end users as well. So um, the, the combination of those two APIs plus what we're doing with Gradient um, and what we're doing with some SOC providers. We have a couple of SOC um, providers that have integrated Nodeware into their SOC provide, uh, into their offerings. So as an MSP, you can start to fully leverage through the API a number of different of these pieces coming together uh, mm -hmm. through SOC Soder, through Agile Blue and others to be able to get full SOC capabilities all the way through to your uh, ticketing system through one of the PSAs that you're connected with to, through Gradient. So it becomes a fully integrated solution. Um, and there's no reason why we couldn't add some of the things coming out of that, that uh, folks like yourself could use for uh, education and training. Yeah, definitely. So could we talk, go back for a second. Um, what are you seeing a dramatic increase from MSPs needing education and training, you know, that maybe 12 months ago um, they weren't asking for, they didn't need. And the only example I can use is, you know, our data shows 18 months ago, kind of half the SMBs in the United States, you know, maybe 325,000 of them, you know, kind of five employees to 500 employees thought the bad guys would never find them. So they didn't really care. <laughs> um, that number's now dramatically down, right? There, there aren't a lot of people that think the bad guys will never find them and they don't have to worry about it at all. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering how that's changed the landscape, the requests, the requirements uh, for what MSPs are asking you for and maybe some of the things you're now delivering to them. Yeah, so I think I think you're right. I mean, a lot of people, there are still some people out there that don't think that someone's going to come for them, maybe the even smaller businesses, the one person businesses and things like that. But obviously, we know that that is not true and that they'll come for anybody. Um, and I recently read a, a stat that was like, maybe 14% of businesses are prepared for an actual data breach. 
So as an MSP, you know, that means that your end users are probably some of those businesses that weren't prepared before they were working with you or they're maybe not at the level that they need to be for a breach. Um, so I think like we hear MSPs come to us and they're asking for security awareness either for the first time or they're looking for something that is going to reach their users more impactfully, like something that's going to like we're offering these micro training videos or just having a little bit more fun with the training to make it more engaging. We're hearing that from people like, hey, like I've been offering this, but I'm not getting a lot of traction or I know people are skipping it and we want to do something that's really to educate the end users. So we're hearing a lot of that, and that's definitely impacting the way that we provide education to our end users. Um, and then the email simulations and branching out into SMS-based attacks and simulations is definitely a big thing that we're hearing a lot about. I mean, I got a missed delivery text this morning that I know is just a phishing email or a phishing text message. Um, and I think like 97% of people can be fooled by a phishing attack. And that seems really high, but that is just because the way that they're targeting us, they're really looking at the patterns of what people do. And so we're doing the same thing at Hackware. Like we're also looking at the actions that people are taking and the most common ways that people are making that quick click so that we're trying to remind people that when they get the simulation, if they click on it, like that's okay. But if you're gonna do this in the real world, like you need to make sure and pause and take a step back and say like, okay, is this really my CEO asking me to buy four gift cards? Probably not, but you never <laughs> know. <laughs> you gotta be careful about stuff like that. And so we're really trying to stay on top of it as it's changing. And we're hearing that from people too. Like I meet people all the time and almost everybody has a story about a phishing attack that they've either been a part of or that they've seen or that they were a near miss. Well, I, I've noticed just, just, you know, beyond the computer, right, just well, our, our handheld computers and our phones, right, the number of texts and, you know, WhatsApp, you know, reach outs that, hi, you know, good to hear from you. And it's like, I don't think I've, that's, I mean, but, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a straightforward text, but then there's also kind of the, the trying to build a relation, you know, establish a relationship that kind of opens themselves up and, and I mean, it's just it's just scary all around. I mean, one way you look at it, but um, and 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 I wonder if you're seeing and this kind of maybe goes back to your regularity, but sort of the let's call it cyber fatigue, right? Or you know, training fatigue. Oh, you know, I did that training last month, and I, you know, just it's just human nature, right? You get tired of doing having to pay attention that hard on things that um, they look fine. Uh, it should be okay, right? So, yeah. how do you reinforce that piece of it? Or what what tools do you have in the in the mix for your MSPs and their employees, their customers? Yes, yeah, so we offer automatic reminders, which is helpful for the MSP who doesn't have to go in and check and make sure if people are actually completing that training. And then we're doing the continuous training in the simulations in your inbox as a way to keep people engaged. And then if you fail the simulation there, then you're sent to a training. And that look, like I was saying before, like they're three minute videos or less, so they're all quick. And we're also adding new content as we move forward we're adding more and more new content so we're going to switch that up so they're not seeing the same things or they're just kind of switching like we're talking about qr code phishing soon like with quishing so that's like when there's a qr code sticker over a real qr code or something like that you know that's becoming more and more prevalent so we're trying to stay on top of all the new trends too so that when someone's watching it they're not like oh i already know this they're like oh wow like i never thought about that before oh brett i'm curious you know, at the client level, is it mostly the president, COO, CFO that's, you know, requesting the training through their MSP? Um, or is it more, you know, the IT person slash security person, you know, full or part time that says, I need assistance, I need help, we need to roll this out? How are you kind of dividing the market by kind of fully outsourced small businesses to MSPs and then? ones that have some expertise in-house? I think it's often the IT people that are the ones reaching out to us and probably because they're the ones seeing the activity the most. We do, of course, hear from CEOs and CTOs and COOs and all of the C-suite people, but um, primarily it's people in the IT field who I think are probably saying like, this is a security measure that we're not taking. And as the person in charge of security for their organization, you know, they're saying like, we better put this first line of defense against phishing attacks like in place so that that's just step one for them. Frank, were you gonna say something? No, I was just I was just sort of my head <laughs> just sort of rolling through. 
Well, I, you know, we, it's funny because we had a, um, we had a managing partner of one of the VCs on uh, a couple of months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and he made the comment that, you know, before we either invest in a company or whether we do in a next level round of investment, you know, we want to make sure they have the right procedures, the right processes in place. Mm-hmm. And we've had some angel investors that are investing in small businesses, not necessarily in technology businesses, but are investing in, you know, heating and air conditioner businesses and local businesses uh, that say, you know, before I give a loan to a company, I want to make sure the data is safe. I want to make sure the systems are secure. I want to make sure that, you know, if they get hit, you know, they can recover. So my money is safe and my investment is safe. And we're hearing more and more about, you know, what we always used to talk about in the IT world around, you know, availability and, uh, and, uh, and continuity of data. Uh, and integrity of data, but it's interesting. We're now starting to hear it from investors and board members and VCs mm-hmm. saying, you know, I want to make sure from a business continuity standpoint, <laughs> if we get hit, we can recover and we can come back to work. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering if, if that's affecting the type of training you're doing more or the motivation for the training. I think that it is in some ways. Like, I think that that's awesome that more people are being more aware of possible cyber attacks. You know, like, that's really what we want. We want to educate as many people as we can. So, um, we definitely offer like a bunch of different compliances. We have learning tracks that we can put people on for like a HIPAA compliance or a NIST compliance to make sure that you are meeting those requirements. And I think that that helps more with the CEOs or the people who aren't necessarily on the technical side who are reaching out and looking for this, we can say like, we're going to offer you these trainings. We're going to make it engaging. It's not going to be too technical. It's going to speak to the end user where they are and it'll increase in difficulty like as we get through different levels of training. So I think I think it's awesome that more people are thinking about uh, about security awareness training. Like that's, that's great because the threat is real. So actually on that, line sort of just thinking of, of how you could help or how you do help an MSP position this to their customer, right? I mean, I was thinking sort of the HIPAA or, um, you know, the FTC safeguards or any, any number of requirements and compliance types of customers out there. But how do you, or what do you, what do you have, I guess, you know, flyers, do you have little videos for the MSP can share with their customers? How do you make it easy for them to, to offer this as part of their mix? Yeah, so with any partner that we have, we offer a lot of different things. So we're a small company, like we're new and starting out. So we're very hands-on and we're very willing to help out with anything that they need. So we offer, yeah, marketing collateral. For example, next month is Security Awareness Month. And so we're going to be offering a bunch of different social media graphics to everyone that they can use to start educating people in their networks about security awareness. So it's like statistics, things to be on the lookout for, but in a fun and digestible way they can share that with their end users. Um, And then we do, we provide them with sales training. We have a customer success manager who's awesome and she can help them navigate through talking to different potential customers and how they can line up for that. Um, Our MSPs can offer free trials to the different companies that they're working with. And so we do a lot of different things. It's kind of on a case by case basis, but we are very open to offering any sort of marketing or sales support. So we have, we just we got one more question. We'll get to that question. If uh, you have any other questions you want to submit, uh, please do those now. Um, anything you want to ask uh, uh, to Britta around education and training and security awareness, anything you want to ask us about the product, uh, please submit them to us now, uh, and we'll be happy to get to those. Um, you know, Frank, we got a, we got a question asked about uh, the reporting and can I get multiple reports and can I schedule reports for my auditors? Uh, maybe it's worth just elaborating a little bit on the reporting aspect. Yeah, so absolutely. So the reporting is is really kind of delivered in two ways. One is on demand. So if I need, um, I think there's now eight different types of reports available. So there's executive summary. There's a network report, which is detailed. You can get a log4j report if you would just want to learn about log4j. There's, um, you know, again, different reports that you might need based on the type of um, you know, compliance you're, you're looking for. So um, you can get those on demand or if you need once a month, the full network report. And maybe you're probably never going to hand it to your customer. But again, kind of as a compliance just of auditing trail, um, you know, you can maybe it's once a week, maybe it's once a month. But that full network detail report, you just 
you know, download it and, and you know, store it for, you know, any potential use. So the reporting is, um, you know, lots of different varieties for what you are needing. And if there's something very specific that you don't see as an MSP that you need or that your customer needs, um, you know, let us know. But we think we've covered the main types of reports available uh, or, or, or needed. Um, just to be clear, let me just uh, read off the report. So, so right now we have a, a network report, external detail report. So if you just want to look at the external sites that you've been um, that you've included, executive summary and top vulnerabilities. If you just want to see the top vulnerabilities for a particular customer, um, log4j audit uh, inventory and exceptions report. So if you want to look at what's been changed over time on each particular device and by who, uh, that's available as a report. There's a um, PlexTrack uh, JSON report if you want to know about the, the, the APIs and an XML report. So again, depending on that should probably cover most of what kind of uh, data somebody might need in a report. But, um, you know, we're, we're adding, we've added a couple just in the last couple months. So I'm happy to, to look if something there is not matching what you need. We also got a question about the unlimited agents um, and the question was specifically about the agents themselves, uh, yes, there's Windows agents, there's Mac agents, there's Linux agents, there's an unlimited number of them. Uh, we will also be releasing a Red Hat CentOS sensor in the next couple of weeks. So that'll be available for uh, from any from a network sensing uh, sensor capability. Once again, unlimited as well. Uh, just to give you some examples, you know, we've got, uh, We've got some school districts that have a ton of, you know, laptops and, and desktops and Chromebooks and the like, and they've got, you know, tens of thousands of agents on those devices. Uh, that's the way they choose to manage it. And we have other organizations that have, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 uh, sensors out on different servers, keeping track of different subnets. So it doesn't make any difference which one of the scenarios you have. Uh, those are all available, unlimited, for free as part of the product. The other thing is we're not interested in getting into the home security business, but with a lot of corporate devices and people working remote, uh, we have corporate executives with corporate devices that have sensors on their devices. So not only can they see what's happening from a vulnerability standpoint on their device, they can see if anybody on their home Wi-Fi uh, may be a vulnerable issue that could get into their laptop, to get into their network, to get into their critical data, or in an urban environment, you know, maybe somebody who's not on their home network and home Wi-Fi, but is hacking into it to get in there, you know, kind of playing to the, uh, um, you know, the thermostat at the Bellagio that you know led to billions of dollars in ransom. Or, or just the weak, the weakest link is still a, is still a, a link, right? A, you know, the, the, the again, the, the that printer that somebody added at their home, right, is is an is an access point that if you're not aware of and um, concerned about. Um, you have to watch that. And one thing I maybe just, it's maybe a little bit of a semantic or just a clarification on the unlimited, right? So what we provide is you can you can download and deploy as many assets and as many sensors as you want or as you want to divide up the, the sense, the, uh, the, the program. Um, but we, our licensing model is a per asset. So you might deploy 100 agents um, on devices. Those are each going to count in your total mix of your of your license and your subscription. So um, just just to be a little bit clear on you know what we're what we license and how you get charged or how you charge your customers is per device that's being managed and being monitored. How it's being managed and you know could be you don't have to have an agent on a notebook if it's in the office. It'll be picked up by the network sensors. And you don't need to have that agent um, deployed. Um, so it's a little bit, a little bit, just a clarification, just to make sure that we, you know, you can deploy as many agents and sensors as you want. We don't charge per the sensor or the agent. We charge by the asset being managed. So why don't we do this? Um, we've got a couple of sessions coming up. Let's bring that slide up. We can talk. Uh, I can mention those sessions. And then Britta, we'll turn it back over to you for any kind of closing remarks and thoughts you have. Um, two things coming up. Uh, we've got the one coming up on October 18th, right? Public service announcement oriented. It is not a demo of the product. Uh, talking about how Gradient and uh, their integrated approach to all of the PSAs and their uh, 
and their uh, building capability integrated in and how them and uh, Integris are working together and how uh, clients can move from providing IT support as an MSP to providing full cyber hygiene. Uh, we'll talk about that on the 18th. If you have any questions, feel free to submit those. Uh, make sure you register through our LinkedIn page as well. Uh, and as I said, you know, we're interested in the collaborative approach to it. So if you have any questions, dialogue on our events page. Uh, we want to make sure, you know, peers are talking to peers about the topics they're interested in. Uh, second of all is around the FTC safeguard and the FTC issues that are coming everyone's way. Uh, this is an important thing. We've got Jim Lawrence from SDP Compliance talking with uh, CPI and Mariplex about how uh, MSPs can support dealerships, how dealerships need to get to the FTC compliance. Uh, it's coming rapidly uh, due to the FTC by uh, December 9th. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, you know, we're happy to talk about that. We have multiple compliance partners that are heavily involved in helping dealerships get there, both from an auto industry standpoint and from an MSP technology standpoint. And we are matchmaking those dealers with compliance organizations with MSPs all the time. Uh, so if you're an MSP that's supporting dealerships and you need assistance with uh, the auto industry specific uh, activities, uh, we could set you up with compliance partners. Uh, and if you're a dealership that's uh, uh, or an MSP that wants to support a number of dealerships, uh, we are looking for partners all the time. Uh, we are matching them up with dealerships that need assistance above and beyond what the compliance partners are capable of providing. So we'll have that conversation on the 20th. Uh, with that, you know, Britta, let me turn it back to you. Any kind of following thoughts, uh, any kind of closing remarks for people who are thinking about either what do they do for security awareness and training or what should they do next? How do they get started? Mm -hmm. uh, well, for an MSP, you can go to hackware.com slash MSP, and that's our partner program, and all of our information is there, and you can learn about us. Or you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn or reach out to Hackware on LinkedIn. Um, and then I just want to say again that Cybersecurity Awareness Month is in October, so we're going to be providing a bunch of educational resources. You'll be able to find those on our LinkedIn page as well. Um, and then we're also doing a webinar ourselves uh, next week with our CEO, Tiffany Ricks, and the VP and channel chief of Fifth Wall Solutions, Wes Spencer. So you can follow us on LinkedIn to check that out too. And we'll, they'll be talking a little bit more deeply about how security awareness training and insurance work hand in hand. That's great. Well, Britta, make sure you tag Frank and I on those on LinkedIn and we'll make sure we share that and get that word out for you. Okay, thank you. So um, if there aren't any other questions, Frank, I'll turn it over to you for kind of some closing thoughts and then we'll uh, wrap up and give everybody a couple minutes back. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I think the the, the main piece here that um, kind of comes back to cyber hygiene and cyber sort of preparedness, right? And and the you know the combination between a nodeware and and a hackware. And I think you kind of did make the connection there, all these wares, but uh, between nodeware and hackware um, for an MSP, I think that's a great you know first one two steps. If you you know wherever you're at, you got You get there's more you need to do. Um, if you're just starting, then start adding nodeware and start offering hackware training to your customers, and you know they're they're going to be a lot more satisfied, and you're going to be a lot more protective of them. So, um, if you're using us already, great, uh, keep on, and if you're not, then give us a try, and we'd love to uh, help you get get to that next level. Perfect. Well. Thank you both for your time today. Really appreciate it. Uh, for anybody that wants to do a proof of concept, uh, you can notify us through our website. Um, if you want to do a free trial for any of your end users, we can do that as well. And, uh, and as I said, if you either have dealerships that you're supporting and you need help getting to the FTC safeguard, uh, please contact us. We are doing a lot of matchmaking these days with uh, those dealerships and MSPs going both directions. So we're happy to do that as well. Uh, please give us, uh, connect with us on LinkedIn, you know, share your thoughts, get involved in our event page, and uh, we'll see everybody on the 18th. Thanks for joining us today, and uh, have you. a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you.